Hello everybody, so this is uh, a video about benzo with travel and why it's so much worse than the high is good. Uh, first of all, the quilly of the day, ashwagandha root, uh, which is a very nice uh, quote-unquote new tropic or adaptogen. Uh, it's usually uh, sold as a kind of um, mood regularizer. Uh, some people say it kind of like removes both extremes, like feeling really good or feeling really bad. But also a lot of people just kind of report like a very mild but noticeable reduction in anxiety. Uh, it can also help a little bit with insomnia. And interestingly, I would say very, very mildly so, it's also a mood lifter. Now, uh, it's true that if you take a high amounts of it, you will just get a lot of nausea and <laughs> uh, diarrhea. And um, it's just like not very self-reinforcing and it basically has kind of this inbuilt maximum amount and after you reach that maximum amount like there's just really no payoff and just side effects increase in that sense it's kind of similar to nicotine except it's not a addictive uh, per se and also kind of similar to caffeine where people tend to self-regulate the amount that they take and usually there's no arbitrary dose escalation um, that said, the most fascinating thing about it is that there's very, very little tolerance to it and there's close to no withdrawal to it. So if you're suffering from anxiety or insomnia or, you know, irritability, it's a pretty safe thing to just try and see if it works or not. Now, bringing this back to <laughs> benzodiazepines, well, um, those are things that you probably shouldn't try if you're experiencing insomnia or anxiety or irritability or, you know, like difficulty um, basically uh, experiencing <laughs> kind of like the, the, the ups and downs of, uh, of everyday life. Uh, it's clearly like, you know, benzos are like clearly just way over prescribed. I know these from statistics, but also from personal experience that when I was 18 years old, I remember talking to my family doctor about having some difficulty sleeping. And uh, he just wrote me a script. He said, oh, this might help you. Just take a couple drops at night. And, uh, you know, picked it up in the pharmacy. And only when I arrived home, I realized that it actually was a benzo. He had prescribed me alprazolam. Just one visit just no deep discussions about, you know, it's possible side effects or dependence or tolerance or anything whatsoever. Now, I read a ton about it online and decided it was just not worth it. That said, I did try it a few times <laughs> just to know what the phenomenology of it is. And uh, it did help me sleep quite a bit. It absolutely uh, made me relaxed and chill. However, it also came with uh, very obvious kind of like cognitive uh, deficits, uh, word finding problems, uh, difficulty remembering like, you know, episodes of the previous days. And this was just with like one or two administrations. And I remember it taking me like a couple days to like fully recover and feel normal, which was kind of crazy for such a such a mild or relatively mild effect. Now, granted, I didn't take a high dose. I do know that if you take a higher dose, let's say something like 10 milligrams of diazepam or something like that, uh, presumably you do experience kind of a pretty pleasant high and euphoria with like nice uh, kind of a, uh, a feeling of like being in this very, very, you know, pleasant, uh, cozy, calm, peaceful space, um, which, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't tried that, uh, but pretty much every Buddy you talk to who's uh, basically had like some difficulty withdrawing from the drug will tell you that the withdrawals were at least 10 times as bad as the actual high was good. Okay, so why could these be? Well, just think first of all, like what are the withdrawal symptoms of something like a benzodiazepine? Well, you know, anxiety, insomnia, irritability, restlessness, hand tremors, muscle spasms, headaches, sweating, racing pulse, hyperventilation, nausea or vomiting, aches and pains, panic attacks, hypersensitivity to stimuli, abnormal bodily sensations, depression, derealization, problems with concentration, visual disturbances, flashes of light, auditory, tactile, uh, visual hallucinations, feelings of unreality, delirium, and grand mal seizure. And you know what all of these have in common? Well, 
they're all conditions for which doctors prescribe benzodiazepines. Okay, so <laughs> what the hell is going on in here? So I'll tell you basically a lot, a few like non-trivial reasons why benzo withdrawal is actually just so much worse in a sense that for most people than what it uh, treats and uh, and how it feels to 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 take it. So. Uh, First of all, super broad spectrum. Okay, so imagine that you're having, you know, some problem with, uh, you know, sweating or, you know, irritability or restlessness, and they prescribe you benzos for that particular purpose. It's going to work really great for a while until you develop tolerance. But guess what? In the meantime, uh, it has been generating tolerance to all of these other systems in your body. In other words, benzos are really a, kind of like a broad spectrum inhibitors, you know, these, you know, GABA receptors, they're just all over the place, you know. It's really not only about your anxiety or your insomnia, you're basically also <laughs> getting tolerance to basically the anti-seizure properties of GABA in your brain. So in a sense, it's like you're treating this particular problem that you were kind of, uh, uh, you know, dysregulated before taking pencils, and all of these other things that you were fine, you were normal, you're getting tolerance to. So by the point you discontinue your benzos or you acquire tolerance, all of a sudden you get a rebound in all of them. And you can, you know, it makes sense, right? If you're getting a rebound on all of them at the same time, that's going to be way worse than basically just the reduction of the symptom that you did have. Okay, does this make sense? If not, <laughs> please tell me in the comments. Another important thing about this is that, you know, the tolerance thresholds and curves and the differential equations with which, you know, the amount of benzos uh, induced tolerance in each of these domains is going to vary. So I've seen a lot of uh, YouTube videos and uh, patient reports and uh, forum posts of uh, people withdrawing from benzos that, you know, talk about how like even with a relatively short term use, let's say like one month, like twice a week, uh, 0.5 milligrams of clonopine or something like that, even with such a supposedly therapeutic dose, um, even as needed, you know, well, the half-life of clonopine or diazepam is just so long that, you know, even though you're taking twice a week, you're still building, building this very, very heavy long-term tolerance. Um, and uh, people experience hot flashes, you know, and this is a logarithmic scale, you know, just how much it feels like your skin is burning. You know, that is one of the things for which benzos is prescribed off-label. Basically, if you, if you have kind of a constant feelings of burning skin. Now, most people don't have that. Um, and you can think of it as like, you know, one of these like logarithmic scales where you increase tolerance to kind of the anti-burning skin system, in this case, one of the GABA systems. Um, and if it's just a little, you may feel a little bit of a tingling. If it's a little bit more, you may feel a little bit of a tingling with a few breakthrough unpleasant sensations. If you get a little bit more tolerance and you discontinue, you will start feeling of pleasant sensations and a few breakthroughs of actual pain, actual feeling of being burnt. If you take more and you discontinue, you may get a breakthrough of actual constant burning, you know, very, very, very painful burning in your skin. And it just continues going up and up. I mean, like, and these are like logarithmic scales. I mean, like, consider just like the size of avalanches, right? Like, you're changing the underlying neurological conditions, which gives rise to basically a different power law of just how intense these hot flashes are. So even if you were treating your hot flashes with uh, some benzos uh, and your hot flashes were like pretty mild, like maybe like two out of 10 in the pain scale, the rebound that you will get might be five out of 10 in the pain scale, which is going to be just a ton more intense. That's another reason why basically the area under the curve doesn't add up. The withdrawal is just far worse <laughs> than the benefits you were getting. Uh, another reason is um, kindling. Kindling. This is very related to neural annealing. Uh, this post by my colleague Mike Johnson. Uh, it's just fascinating that in a sense, when you are kind of like coming up and down and up and down and up and down on a, on a benzo, basically each withdrawal period is kindling, is making it easier for the withdrawal patterns to basically take hold in your nervous system. And uh, that's uh, kind of crazy, but you know, you get these uh, effects where like if you're taking a high enough dose of a benzo, even if you're staying at the exact same dose, you may start experiencing all of the symptoms of withdrawal from benzo. This, for example, is something that happened to Jordan Peterson. I think like he 
uh, upped his dose of clonopine to four milligrams or something like that from, from two because he was already getting kind of like some unpleasant side effects from two um, that he needed to treat. And by the time he was, you know, four milligrams or something like that, like basically he was experiencing like a constant benzo withdrawal, even though he was in a higher dose than before. So that is kindling for you. Obviously, really terrible for kind of a long-term, long-term use. Um, what else? Neurotoxicity. We were talk I was talking about memory problems. Well, the more neurotoxic a substance is, the more is going to pair your ability to recover, to actually heal. So, you know, you're talking about something that is very long-lasting, is neurotoxic, and uh, for which the, the tolerance is uh, basically uh, crazy unequal in terms of the benefits versus drawbacks, and on top of that is neurotoxic, and therefore you talk about like recovering timelines of six months or 12 months, you know, it's insane, insane, insane in that sense. Okay, what else? Well, the memory suppression in and of itself is one of the reasons why in a sense the high is not, is not as good as you, you might expect. And that is because you won't remember a lot of it. Now, there's this whole discussion of uh, experiencing self versus remembering self, you know, uh, Kahneman talks about that. And in some sense, okay, you can say like you're memoryless experiencing self did experience the positive high of, uh, I don't know, Xanax or whatnot. Um, and is your experiencing self uh, the one that matters? On the other hand, you know, when you remember what did you did in your life, uh, you may only remember the withdrawals when you were actually picking up memories again. And people talk about like, just not remembering years of their life, uh, especially people who were like heavy users, especially recreational users. But, you know, this also happens with uh, people who take it in quote unquote therapeutic doses in, in the long term. What else? Basically, arousal is a multiplier of consciousness. So, you know, I obviously think methamphetamines are like a terrible thing to put into your body. However, you know, a methamphetamine crash and withdrawal, um, one of the silver linings of it is that you will spend it sleeping. You will spend it completely with a very low amount of consciousness. So in this equation is, well, the high is being multiplied by this arousal coefficient, whereas the withdrawal is being multiplied by this very low arousal coefficient. And in that sense, hey, like it's not as bad. Whereas consider benzos, you know, the high is low arousal. <laughs> in that sense, it diminishes consciousness. And then the withdrawal is hyperconscious. You know, you spend days and days without able being able to sleep. Um, there's and having to endure all of those extremely awful, you know, logarithmic level, uh, you know, intensities of negative valence. So, again, in that sense, that's a terrible reason why benzos are just not worth it. Not not at all for for the vast, vast, vast majority of people who um, to to whom they are prescribed. Uh, there's some complications, you know, with the story I just told you, because a lot of people who use meth uh, will take benzos in order to calm down um, because they're experiencing kind of intense anxiety. And there's like something really tricky about how, like in some sense, like a stimulant calm down is this phase where you're still highly stimulated, except that the stimulation feels dissonant and out of control, kind of out of whack. And in that sense, yeah, you're also still kind of forced to have a hyperconscious calm down on, you know, a meth binge or whatnot. But that's a that's a complication uh, and an epicycle to add to this. Now, um, if you are taking benzos, though, uh, the kind of like the <laughs> cherry on top of the cake is that there's this whole ideology in medicine that uh, it's just so difficult to distinguish somebody who's just a drug drug seeker, somebody who's just going to the doctor in order to get you know, you know, recreational drugs, and and people who are actually just communicating honestly their 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 side effects. And unfortunately, there's kind of some overlap between people who might just want more benzos to have fun, quote unquote, um, versus people who are, you know are actually just need to taper very slowly because the intensity with the withdrawal is like insane. And um, I've just read so many comments by doctors and, and uh, specialists or quote unquote experts in this field that basically they, they complain about patients not, not following through with the doctor approved taper, which tends to be extremely fast and basically lead to grand mal seizures and just permanent side effects. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, basically, this is one of the cases where, you know, I am not a doctor, <laughs> but I would say definitely be skeptical about your doctor's understanding of tolerance for substances, and especially your doctor's understanding of the tolerance of benzos, because let's face it, most doctors still think in this childish way of what goes up has to come down. They have a very uninformed and unempirical understanding of tolerance. Yeah, that's uh, just true for the most part, unfortunately. Now, there is hope, and this is very important to emphasize, and I may, I will probably write about this quite, quite a bit, which is that there are some therapies that seem to be capable of dramatically reducing the intensity and the length of uh, benzo withdrawal. Um, again, like I'm not speaking from personal experience because I've never experienced benzo withdrawal. Um, I've only, you know, again, as prescribed, taken it a couple times and decided it's just absolutely not for me, like over 10 years ago. But um, I do pay attention to really extraordinarily large effect sizes when I see them online. And two therapies that I've come to the conclusion that there is enough evidence, enough and enough bulk of extraordinary anecdotal evidence that can be verified is, first of all, IV NAD plus therapy. Um, and this, you know, there's these articles online by The Guardian or, or whatnot where say like, oh, like these recovery clinics are charging for unproving methods uh, for, for benzo withdrawal. And like, if you read that article, you get really scared and you think like, oh yeah, you know, they're just taking advantage of like poor benzo, benzo withdrawing people. But then if you actually read the testimonials and, you know, you talk to these people, you watch their videos, you will see that the effect size seems to be really, really, really insane. I mean, we're talking about like somebody who's been on uh, like, you know, five milligrams of, of Xanax every day for, for years can basically experience a withdrawal that only takes like 20 days rather than 12 months. And they rate it as like, you know, one tenth or like one hundredth as intense as it would have been otherwise. So 100% something super important to to look into. I would I would I would uh, recommend. Uh, not that I am claiming that it works. It's just I think that the evidence is such that it would be amazing to actually conduct clinical trials. And if you're experiencing uh, benzo withdrawal, it might actually be very worthwhile to try one of these therapies. So the the second one is coming from this entire field that unfortunately is highly neglected in medicine and in psychopharmacology, which is Anti-tolerance drugs. The poster child of anti-tolerance drugs would be ibogaine, which can really, you know, get rid of super intense heroin withdrawal um, very quickly uh, with like minimal side effects, especially if you're using like microdoses as opposed to like a quote-unquote flood dose. Uh, there's no need for the crazy psychedelic effects in order to get the biochemical benefits. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for benzos, there is something that is kind of equivalent and it's called flumazenil. And it's actually used in Japan to help people wean off of uh, benzos, which is a uh, basically GABA agonist. I mean, it's kind of like an anti-benzo. But here again, tolerance mechanisms are completely non-trivial. Uh, the typical example with uh, opioids would be, what is it called? Um, naltrexone. That like people report that if they take microdoses, even, even people who don't take any opioids, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't tried naltrexone myself, but like people do report that like extremely tiny doses upregulate opioid receptors and you can feel a little bit better for several days without experiencing the negatives in the moment. And likewise, flumazenil, it's something like that, that you take a tiny microdose, it doesn't really feel like anything, but it kickstarts this upregulation in, in a sense, the rather than the negative uh, feedback mechanism is the positive feedback mechanism where you get more more benzodiazepine, more GABA GABA receptors. Um, and uh, that seems also extremely promising and there's also a significant number of patient reports and medical reports that suggest that, yeah, that it can reduce, you know, tenfold, maybe a hundredfold just how bad benzos, benzo withdrawal are. So, okay, hopefully you got something out of these and, uh, you know, Wish you luck uh, wherever you're struggling and <laughs> have a wonderful year. Thank you so much.